We're going to demonstrate our inside out repair technique for a bucket handle meniscus tear. Initially we use a ball rasp to clean the base of the capsular meniscus. Again we leave it in the bucket handle position, allows for easier cleaning. We use a shaver to further roughen up the capsule to allow for an excellent bleeding edge once the tourniquet is released. We clean up any remaining small tears. After we evaluate this, especially in the medial compartment, we trephinate the MCL. This allows for easier passage of sutures later on and has no long-term effects on the MCL. After this, we have easy reduction. Again, you can see the deformity of the meniscus, and this is the reason we chose an inside-out repair. Initially, we use a slide and an Arthrex fibrocin stitch. This is an all-suture, all-inside technique that reduces the need for peak implants. And the double-stranded sutures allow for better compression of the posterior horn of the meniscus. Once the first portion is placed, we slowly reduce the needle and place it a second time, again, in a combination of a horizontal and vertical mattress configuration. Once this is removed, we tension the loop outside of the knee and use the metal cannula and a knot pusher to further tension the meniscus back to the capsule as you can see here. This provides excellent pull-out strength as well as compression. Here you can see we use the tension cutter and again there are no knots on the surface of the meniscus for this type of implant. This also makes the inside out repair much easier as the meniscus will stay stabilized in its compartment. We now use a Arthrex zone specific self-guided cannula system and we'll place roughly 8 to 10 stitches composed of suture tape into the meniscus. Again this is a newer technique and the suture tape has higher tensile and strength than previous sutures we've used. The nice thing about this device is it can be done all by a single individual. As you can see here, I'm actually holding the leg and passing the stitches throughout with ease. All these stitches are placed in a vertical mattress fashion to avoid pull out of the radial fibers of the meniscus. We place four above and four below. This enables the meniscus to sit in anatomic orientation and does not under or over reduce it. It's a single cannula, so the needle placed into the meniscus first. Once that needle is pulled out, we turn our attention to the lower surface and place the second needle, pulling the suture tape through the capsule. Once the posterior portion is performed, we focus attention on the mid body. Again, making sure we have a good bite of the meniscus below, and then we enter into the capsule. Another trick is whomever is retrieving it can snap the ends together in order. This makes tying at the end much less difficult and provides any tangles. Again, as you see, all of this is used through the same guided system and there's no need to switch different cannula types for this repair and we're able to get all the way up to the anterior horn. As you see now the meniscus is sitting flat. We we'll place one more stitch in an area where we think may add further improvement to the fixation. Again, we use a small portion of the needle out there to hold it and then enter it through the meniscus and the capsule.
Once these are completed, we remove all the ends of the needles. We have now tied all the sutures to the capsule at 90 degrees. And we use a probe to demonstrate excellent reduction of the meniscus. To improve healing, based off recent studies, it shows a 25% improvement without ACL reconstruction. We microfracture the notch. We perform three to four microfracture holes on the medial and lateral side. One key to this is to switch portals so you don't do any further damage to the notch. After this is complete, we remove the fluid to allow for marrow extravasation to confirm adequate microfracture.